Well, hi everyone. Welcome back to another podcast. If you hear a little bit of a hum in the background, that's the air conditioners. We're getting into summer now. It's been hot in the 80s. Next week's supposed to be in the upper 90s, almost 100 degrees. So, yeah, we got the air conditioners on. So, what I want to talk about today is cameras. And hopefully somebody can give me a true, unbiased comment down in the comments. Some unbiased advice as to where to go so let me give you a little bit of perspective first my main cameras i shoot with and yes this um, gopro is still having a problem i still haven't switched it out because i don't know what camera i'm going to use for the desk situation but that's not a camera that i'm addressing right now so my main cameras I have outside of using my phone and my GoPros are my Sony ZV-1, which I have totally rigged out. It's the first generation ZV-1. I've totally rigged that out for studio work, filming work, and everything. That's like my main video camera. I also have a Nikon D3100 that was manufactured, I believe, in 2009, although I bought it in 2010. So it's either a 2009-2010 model. 14 megapixels. I um, absolutely love that camera for still photography. I originally bought it for still photography. I know it was an entry-level budget camera, but that was all I could afford at the time. It's really done me well. And everybody knows back then video was really not the main thing people were shooting so the video quality of it kind of stinks let's just put it that way still photography was a thing back then we didn't have the video technology we have nowadays across camera so for a little bit of a context I am a hybrid shooter I do both still photography and video Although, as you see by my YouTube channels, it's mostly video. I do have my personal website, sherviewphotography.com, which is all my still photos. It's uh, basically based on a theme of a life well-traveled where I took still photos everywhere I went. And the photos on there are from my old film days, soon to be current film, which I'm still testing a film camera which is not part of this um, podcast so there'll be a video coming out about that later and also my digital photography but here's my dilemma when it comes to cameras and where I want to go in the future as you know I'm an outdoor guy so lightweight is better I'm a hybrid shooter I do both photos and videos I take photos for my personal memories I also take photos and upload them with the hopes of selling them uh, as um, prints, wall canvases, home decor, gifts, sakes, keepsakes, or whatever. Video I do for YouTube. I'm also going to get into possibly doing video for my local church. And I have mentioned in the past that at some point down the road, I want to get into possibly offering video services and the point of interviews maybe small documentaries and also doing commercials for local mom and pop type businesses. So that's the context. Now, when it comes to looking at cameras and my next step, this is where it's starting to get a little confusing. If you ever followed my Amazon wish list, you will know that over time my cameras that are on my wish list keep changing so the cameras that i have out there the longest some of them are not on the wish list anymore because like i said it keeps changing so the first camera i had on the wish list the longest and i kept looking at was the sony a7s3 this is a camera that everybody uses for video for youtube and client work and everything it's the king of low light it's it's been around as like the top video camera to use the only problem with it for me is photo wise it's only 12 megapixels so that's lower than the Nikon D3100 I have now if I wanted to sell um, photos that I've taken from it although video wise it'd be a great camera same thing with the um, Sony FX3 
and its baby brother, the FX30, the form factor would be perfect for traveling. FX3 is a little bit better because it is full frame, so it'll be better in low light, have better capabilities. Other cameras I have looked at are the Fujifilm cameras. I don't know much about them. I've never worked with Fuji at all. I've never held a Fuji, never seen them. Although they are kind of interesting cameras, especially the new X-T50, which has film simulation for both photos and you can get that simulation in video. So I started looking at that one also because some of the work that I do in my personal videos, you know, I go back and I talk about a lot of nostalgia things on places I've been, um, places I'm revisiting. So it would be nice to actually have a film simulation that I can actually use to kind of bring back the nostalgia part of it when I'm talking. Plus I'm also getting back into film photography and I have a lot of um, vintage lenses I've been looking at, picking up a few here and there that I would like to adapt to my next camera. Also understand the, the um, X-T50 has pretty excellent video capabilities. The only thing is that does not have a fully articulating flip out screen. It's only a tilting screen. So it wouldn't be great for vlogging. It would be more or less for me being behind the camera, but also that can lead to certain issues about the different angles, you know, if I'm trying to get up high or down low. I've had tilting screens in the past, and so sometimes the tilting screen is just not enough. You need something that you can totally flip around. But the X-T50 is an interesting camera that I've thought about. But I've been leaning heavily towards Panasonic Lumix, particularly the S5 II and the S5 IIx. And what I really like about the S5 IIx is the open gate where it makes full use of the sensor so that if I do get into client work, I can go ahead and crop down to vertical, you know, different aspects for different social media. If they wanted to post to like, let's say Instagram Reels, TikTok, um, Facebook, the three platforms that I really don't post to anymore. I'm pretty much a strictly YouTube guy now. So you could also use it for the YouTube shorts. You could also use it for long forum content. The thing is about Panasonic Lumix. I've held the S5 II, I have not held the S5 IIx, but they're both the same body. Felt really great in my hands, you know, I liked where the button setup was. And everything I researched about the S5 IIx, I thought this was really going to be the camera that I'm targeting. Full frame, excellent um, low light capabilities. They just put in the phase detect autofocus, so... The autofocus has come a long ways. The IBIS is absolutely incredible. I've seen YouTubers, the photos that they've taken with it. And I thought that was really going to be the camera that I target. And it still is heavily on my radar. Although, here's the thing. Panasonic recently released the S9 and the GH7. GH7 is micro four thirds, so that's smaller than APS-C or crop sensor. It still has like great, great capabilities, even a little bit more than the um, S5-2X. However, it would not be that great in low light, but then again, it does have the back illuminated um, sensor, which would boost the light capability. So. I'd have to research more on the GH7, but not sh so sure about micro four thirds because of the the way the focal length changes. You have more of a crop factor, so I'd have to be really picky about the uh, lens selection. So I'm not gonna talk about the GH7 um, for now, although it does look like a very capable camera with SSD recording. Something also that would really be something for me to consider. but. Here comes the problem that I'm wondering with Panasonic. The S9 came out as a smaller rangefinder style camera without an EVS that pretty much is supposed to do everything the S5 II 
does photo and video wise as far as the actual sensor they did make some limitations on that which i'm not going to get into you can go all over youtube about how the s9 actually broke the whole camera industry camera reviews with the way you know can we really trust camera reviews on youtube anymore whether you know people are being paid off to say certain things and I understand this happens in every single industry. It doesn't matter if it's tents, camping gear, or whatever. They give you a product for free to use. They either pay you, they you know loan you. You're kind of like almost obligated to really make this product sound great. It's more or less you're making a commercial more about it than an honest review. And then if you say anything bad about this companies or you mention any limitations, then the next time they won't sponsor you or give you any equipment. You know, I get it. That's the nature of the beast. But the thing that worries me about an end consumer on this and somebody who's really trying to consider what my next camera is going to be. So the S9, it was originally supposed to be, this is this S5 II rangefinder equivalent, you know, with recording limits which for me for what i shoot and what their recording limits are yeah i could probably work around it the hot shoe versus cold shoe typically i don't really use the shoes that much on my camera although if i was going to do client work i would want a hot shoe that i could have integrated interfaces for plugging in mics and that as a casual shooter for what i do for my youtube channel it really doesn't bother me because I can always plug into the uh, 3.5 jack if I need a external microphone I can plug in my wireless into the 3.5 jack my lights are external typically when you rig these things out on a cage you're blocking the shoe anyway especially if you had a top handle or any type of monitor um, that would sit over that area so I'm not really too concerned about that the part that concerns me the most is recently it came out on a bunch of websites that Panasonic and their S9 Lumix line got caught in their marketing media and the website saying that these photographs that they had posted was taken with the S9 camera, but it turned out that like Hawaii and their cell phone and um, boasting about their camera qualities on their cell phone, that was not the case. If you remember what happened to Hawaii, it later came out that their photos that were supposed to be taken with the cell phone were actually exposed and it came out that they were taken with a DSLR camera. So those were not the photos that that phone could produce. Now, it recently came out with a Panasonic Lumix S9 that the photos that they posted were actually taken with a Nikon camera and you could go back and forth on whether Nikon or Canon are the king of still photos. Nikon's always lagged a little bit in the video quality, but they're catching up now, especially with the plans going forward with the fact that they purchased RED. Canon's had some back and forth about their photo and video quality so you know it's always like one's always up in each other but the fact that it's now been exposed that the s9 the photos used were actually being taken with a nikon that kind of makes me wonder about is the s5 2x the camera that i want as far as image quality for my photos and possibly my videos because the s9 has the same sensor as the s52 and s52x so if lumix use nikon images to say hey this is what this camera can do does that also mean now the S52 and S52X doesn't take the same quality because the fact the S9 has the same sensor? So this is where I am kind of like on this whole, like what is the next camera for me? Truthfully, in the matter is if I wasn't going to get involved in doing video for my church and needed an SSD to record external, 
and also to be able to do streaming to Facebook and um, YouTube lives. I would probably look more towards the Fuji X-T5 because that supposedly has great photo capabilities with it being able to have the whole film simulation built into it and it looks like it has the video capabilities with its 6k and then 6k down sampling to 4k but like i said it's the whole flippy screen thing that's why i just don't know anymore because on one hand it's like personally if it was just me and my hobbies and my youtube channel i would look at fuji but considering what i'm going to be starting to do with the church and this is like a few weeks down the line i've got equipment right now to get the church started with what they perceive they want to do but looking down the line and also if i start doing client work i am on the fence do i want to go back to considering sony do I still want to consider Panasonic? Unfortunately, I'm not in a situation where I can rent each camera, test them out, rent the lenses, because that can get almost expensive as buying a camera, because I would want to rent a camera for at least one or two weeks more so that I can actually get the full use out of it and see exactly what it can do. Renting for one or two days would not give me enough time with a camera, especially if the weather turns out to be rainy or whatever. Some of these cameras are not weather sealed, some of them are, but even though they're weather sealed, you really don't want to take them out in a torrential downpour, although they boast that, yeah, the weather sealing can handle it, but I wouldn't want to do it to risk it. But it can get expensive renting camera and camera lenses, especially since I probably would want to rent three or four lenses and the focal length that I would need, which would be the 24 to 70, the 70 to 200, and a 16 to 35. Also a 24 millimeter prime. Those are the main lenses that I gravitate towards. Those are the main focal lengths that I use. Even when I got my Canon FD film camera and buying a prime lens, inexpensive on eBay that were in brand new condition or refurbished. The wide angles are the ones I gravitate towards. I really don't do anything beyond a 200 or 210 uh, millimeter focal length anymore. I'm not shooting wildlife anymore because i'm not in an area where wildlife is that prevalent i am not shooting sports i don't know if i'd ever want to get into sports and i am definitely not getting into weddings if somebody can steer me down a path with non-biased honest reviews and i'm going to keep doing my research that would be totally awesome because like i said after youtube kind of blew up with all how camera reviews happen biases and who's being paid off and why certain people review the way they do i don't know if i really want to watch camera reviews anymore i would be more interested in watching you know like my one year with this camera my two year with this camera type videos so that i could see really the limitations but then again here's the other thought behind that considering what is being said about camera reviews lately and the way the whole industry is working and all that if these people are like let's say being sponsored by you know, either Sony, Canon, Panasonic, Fuji, these other ones, and they're looking to get their hands on the newest cameras coming out so that, you know, they can maintain their sponsorships and all that. Are their one-year reviews really, let's say, that honest? Because if a year down the line I'm saying, this camera has not worked out for me and here's all the flaws as to why it has not worked out for me you know here's what i found after a year of ownership i didn't like about it would that company want to work with me again so after this whole thing just blew up i am really on the fence about what my next camera is going to be don't know if i'm going to go back to reconsidering sony cameras although like i said 
I absolutely love my Sony um, ZV-1, the first generation. Not where they tried to do the 1F with the fixed focal length and then whatever came after that. I have the first generation. Love the 4K image quality that's coming out of it. Love the autofocus. Love leaving it in set and intelligent auto so it knows if something is backlit, if it's macro, if it's portrait, if I'm doing landscape. Absolutely love that. It's just I need an interchangeable lens system for the better depth of field for the higher image quality and also need external SSD recording ability because of the fact that I'll be shooting a lot of long form content also need something that has a full HDMI port because I am going to be doing a lot of studio work and client work and stuff for the church so I need that bigger monitor but here's the thing right now I have the Atomos Shinobi which is a great monitor but it doesn't have record capabilities it's just a monitor so I would have to look at upgrading to possibly like the Ninja 5 or whatever so that I could actually record externally and have the USB port for streaming if we're doing lives. Right now it looks like the only cameras that are capable of doing something like that are the Panasonic S52 and S52X, the new Lumix GH7, but like I said that's Micro Four Thirds, so that's something I would have to get used to the focal lengths not even being APS-C which I've shot APS-C for like and one inch um, sensors for like the longest time so I would have to get used to the focal length started researching lenses on that they don't have equivalents that I can find to the standard um, 2470, the 7200, and the 1635s. So again, it would be like, okay, what, what primes would I have to look at? And then sometimes shooting video with a prime is not in your best interest because I know if like shooting in a church situation or if I'm shooting something that's happening on stage, you'd like to get the wide angle, but then if somebody's speaking, you need to zoom in so stopping to record, changing lenses, and then whatever else happens on stage, changing lenses back is not the best. That's why people use uh, zoom lenses. So I've really been on the fence about what my next camera is going to be. I'm still researching cameras. I love camera technology. I was really on the fence about buying the ZV-1 because everybody bashed that camera when it first came out. Then I found a couple uh, independent reviewers that actually posted the video quality on it and I jumped on that camera I've been happy ever since I don't know it's like right now I'm kind of tossed up about whether the camera is going to go from a Sony or going from a Panasonic the reason why Canon really has not been on my radar is because of the fact that it seems Every time they come out with a new camera model that's supposed to be better, their lens mount changes. So they have the they have the FD fully manual lenses that are great vintage lenses. They were the basis for the KF cinema lenses that Hollywood used for the longest time. So I have the FD. Then they went to the EF which EF is still out there in the EOS line of cameras. Then they went to the M mount, which M, with their M50 and all that, they've shortly discontinued afterwards, probably because quality line and the fact that the M series cameras really did not take off. They also have the RF mount. So there's too many mounts out there to really go down the path of Canon cameras because I'm the type of person that believes in inventing, um, investing in glass, investing in your lenses. That's going to be your payoff long term. Camera bodies change, so I don't like to switch systems. That's why I've had my Nikon D3100 for so long. Plus the other thing is I've got a Canon camcorder that I bought. The battery is probably proprietary so they did not release the licensing to that so at the time the battery for it was um, $300 to get the 
spare battery, which was half the price of the camcorder. Found out the cold or hot shoe, I'd have to look exactly which, what that has, whether it has an interface in it or not. Found out that that's a micro style, so that any of your standard hot shoe or cold shoe equipment doesn't even fit it. And also the mic plug-in on it is a um, 3.5, which was kind of standard anyway. Um, other than that, it's a great camcorder, so. Yeah, I've just been kind of on the fence about where I'm going from here with um, cameras. And like I said, if anybody wants to comment what their feelings are about after this whole blow up on YouTube uh, when the S9 came out as to what the best hybrid camera to get would be considering I would be going into possibly shooting for clients, shooting for my church, also using this camera personally for my YouTube channel, which involves a lot of outdoor activities, plus being a hybrid shooter with photos. So anyway, that's my thoughts today and the question about camera gears and where we're going from here. So I'll see you in the next video. Summer's here. It's getting hot out. It's finally slowed down with the amount of rain we're getting. So I'll be getting back out to my adventures very soon and We'll see you in the next video.